Hey, I'm Hans Hess. Thanks for watching my television program. Such a blessing, such an honor to come to you and preach the Word of God. I have a fire in my heart to win as many people to Jesus as I can before I leave here. I feel like the house is on fire and I'm trying to rescue folks out of the fire. So thanks for watching today. We're going to get into the scripture and I want you to open up your mind and open up your heart. Take just a few minutes and listen to what I have to say and allow God to speak to you today. Believe God. Elevate your faith today as you listen and believe God for great things. Luke chapter 1 verse, I'm just going to begin with verse 67, okay? This is the song and the praise of Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. If you read Luke's account of the birth of Jesus, these passages are filled with the Holy Spirit. Every person who is involved in these passages is filled with the Holy Spirit. There's prophetic words, there's prophetic songs. Why? Because when God comes, that stuff happens. So now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and remember his holy covenant. Can everyone say remember? the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, which uh, with which the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Can we say amen? amen. I want to preach this morning from verse 72 to remember his holy covenant, to remember his holy covenant. Psalm 103, that beautiful psalm, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. The, the latter part of that psalm says this in verse 11. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame and he remembers that we are dust. When I began thinking about preaching this morning, I, this idea came to me the other day that Christmas is about remembering. I mean, first of all, it's about us. I, I don't know if there's one of us in this place that doesn't come into Christmas and all these memories start flooding. Memories of childhood, memories of what it used to be like. You know, I grew up with, in a place that snowed quite a bit and Christmas snows, thought we were going to have one here. But it almost, we came close, didn't we? But, and, you know, in memories of all that stuff, whatever your memory, it, it, it's just flooded with memories. And I remembered, no pun intended, that remembrance was part of the Christmas text. That Jesus came and God was saying in his coming, I've not forgotten you. I've not forgotten you, and I've not forgotten my covenant. I've not forgotten who you are. I've not forgotten where you came from. And I have an amazing future for you. That's, that's part of the Christmas story that God has not forgotten. So I want to talk just a few minutes on God remembering. 
Okay, in the Old Testament, the term for remembering here is a term in Hebrew, zakar, which is used of people and it's used of God in remembering. We see in the Old Testament that God remembers his people. In the story of Noah and the destruction of the world through the flood, at the end of that, after Noah had been on the waters for many days, the Bible said God remembered Noah and he caused the wind to begin to blow so the waters receded. Also, Genesis chapter 19, when Lot was trapped down in Sodom and all of that evil, the Bible says God remembered Abraham and for Abraham's sake, he saved Lot and his family. Genesis chapter 30, if you guys have been tracking with me on Wednesday nights through Genesis, the Bible says when Rachel was distressed because she was barren and the Lord remembered Rachel and opened her womb and she had children. So God remembers his people. God remembers the prayers of his people. The Bible says in 1 Samuel that Hannah, who was the mother of Samuel, she went to the temple of God or tabernacle in those days and she prayed. And the Bible says that God remembered her and she gave birth to this man who would become prophet to the nation of Israel. And God remembers his covenant. Genesis chapter 9, God put a rainbow in the cloud. He said that I might remember my covenant never to destroy the earth again with water. Exodus chapter 2, when Egypt had held the Israelites captive in this, really it became an oppressive bondage for many years, 410 years. The Bible says that God remembered his covenant with Israel and he sent Moses down to deliver them. And the passage I read you in Psalm 103 is similar to a passage in Isaiah that's always blown me away. Isaiah 43, the Bible says, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. So God remembers everything. But somehow, miraculously, when we come and put our sins at the cross, at the feet of Jesus, he forgets them all. Can somebody shout amen? He remembers everything, but he doesn't remember our sins. So God is a remembering God. The Bible also mentions how his people remember. The Bible says we're to remember the day of our deliverance, Exodus chapter 13. God told the Israelites, don't forget what I've done for you and remember how I brought you out. The Bible says in Exodus 23, God told Israel, don't remember the former gods of Egypt, nor the gods of the Canaanites. Re don't remember their names. Get out of it all. Also, the Bible says that when we pray, we can call on God to remember. Isaiah chapter 38, and they said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech you how I've walked before you in truth. And the, the, the Hezekiah is praying here. And then in worship, we remember God. What we did this morning was praise the Lord in song, but also there's a memory thing happening where we're remembering how good God's been to us. We're remembering all that He's done in our lives. I will mention the loving kindness of God. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all the Lord has bestowed on us and with great goodness toward the house of Israel. I'm remembering His loving kindness. It's a term chesed in Hebrew. It's the closest we have to grace in the New Testament. So when we're praising Him, we're remembering all of His great loving kindness and His grace toward us. Can somebody shout amen? amen. And Isaiah says this, a, a mind-boggling passage, Isaiah 63, 17, For behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into your mind. There's coming a new heaven and a new earth according to the New Testament. His kingdom is coming here physically. 
And then there's coming a new heavens and a new earth ultimately one day, and it's going to be such a profound thing. Isaiah said, you'll not remember it, nor will it come to your mind, the old earth. So why all this remembrance? Because in Luke 1.72, he said, he's coming to remember his covenant. Christmas is something where God announces, I haven't forgotten mankind. I've been working a plan since the book of Genesis to redeem humanity. And the ultimate fulfillment of that plan was the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. The ultimate fulfillment. God had a plan all along. So Christmas tells me that God hasn't forgotten me. Because God had a plan all along. The Bible says that He had a plan from Genesis chapter 3. When the Lord looked at the serpent in the garden and said, Her seed shall bruise your head or crush your head. There's a plan that Satan, you will be defeated. And it will be through the seed of this woman who you've tempted to fall. She's going to come back. And out of her is going to come the source of your destruction. Oh, how I feel this this morning. And now we're celebrating. Christmas isn't just about lights and candy, though we love all that. Christmas is about Jesus coming to do war against the kingdom of hell and to tear down the principalities and powers and judge them openly and to set mankind free. God had it figured out all along. He had it figured out from the beginning. From Genesis, God had a plan. The Bible even says that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. God had it figured out in his time, which is he isn't bound to time, so he had this thing figured out before any of us came into being. I heard a preacher say this one time, and it rocked my world. He said, would you marry someone that you knew would commit adultery on you and that you knew would be horribly unfaithful to you. I don't know a person in their right mind who would do that. But it's kind of what God did. In His foreknowledge, He knew mankind would fail horribly. But it didn't stop the power of His love. And it didn't stop the goal that he saw in the future, which was a redeemed humanity and a redeemed people and a plan that he had figured out before the worlds had even begun. And when he began this plan in Genesis, he called a man, Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, and he struck covenant with that man. The Hebrew for covenant means to cut. He cut covenant because the sacrifice of animals was used. He cut covenant with that man, and he never forgot the covenant. No wonder if you were here the other night with, for our production, and wasn't that production absolutely phenomenal. Phenom phenomenal. Phenomenal. Over 1,300 people here last weekend. Praise the Lord. Many accepted Christ. Can we give the Lord a shout? For that, hallelujah. But when we received communion at the end, I said these words that Jesus took the cup and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He struck a new covenant with us, fulfilling all past covenants, that now we have a covenant with God. And I know one thing, God will never forget his covenant. You know why he'll never forget it? Because he can't forget. The only thing he forgets is what he wills and decrees to forget, which is the sins of those who've been washed in the blood of Jesus. Other than that, he always remembers. And the covenant, I believe, stands as a memorial before him. Remembering is just a biblical way of speaking. And it's a biblical way of saying God has always had you on his mind. 
And so what this tells me is through everything I've been through and through everything I've experienced, and even before I came to know the Lord, I was on his mind. Hallelujah. Before I ever came to church, when I was running hard away from him and when I was cursing him and when I was trying to be as rebellious as I could against him, his love was running me down in the street because he never forgot me. I was always on his mind. Hallelujah. You've always been on his mind. You've never gone too far that you've gone out of sight to where God couldn't see you and you never ran so hard that God, that you went so far that God couldn't reach out and touch you and you've never cursed so much that he couldn't hear for the, for the din and the noise. He's always had you in his heart and he's always had you before his vision. His love is towards you. This is what Christmas is all about. Somebody give him a shout. Hallelujah. Come on, shout it out. God has never forgotten. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is better than Christmas dinner. But I am trying to work all this sugar out of my system right now so I can... God is working. You know, it, you know what it means to me that God remembers in Christmas? It means that not only has He not forgotten about me, but God is working all things for my good. That God is working everything out for my good, even when I don't understand it. He's working. He's got a recipe He's working. And that recipe is a little portion of good for Hans and two cups of of amazing for Hans and a dash of happy for Hans Come on. and some organic seeds of blessing for Hans and some baked and roasted joy for Hans. Come on, somebody. He's working a recipe and even though I, I look at the particular ingredients and I can't see the whole picture because I'm not infinite like God is, and, but yet he's working it all and he's baking this thing up and it's going to come out in the end, good, 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 good. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, Psalm 27, 13, Psalmist David said, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have given up. I would have quit. I would have tapped out by now. But I knew that God had good in my future. I knew he had good in my future. Hallelujah. And the devil may throw the kitchen sink at you, but just, 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 just tell him, he, you're done, devil. Not today, Satan. God has good in my future. Hallelujah. And he's going to bring it to pass in my life because he's working a plan that's good then. It's good now. It's going to be good tomorrow. Come on, if you believe that for you and your family, raise your hand and give him a wave. God is working all things. This, this is Christmas, right? It says God has come to bring great joy, glad tidings, peace on earth, reconciliation, deliverance from your enemies. All this is in the text. He's come to bring all of this through the birth of this child. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Remembering God, remembering in Christmas also tells me that my future is absolutely secure in His hands. That my future is absolutely secure. Psalm 31. Psalm 31. I would have. Psalm 27 rather. I would have. I would have if I hadn't known some things. I would have tapped out had I not known some things. But I knew that God was going to bless me with good in the future. Come on. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 31 and verse 15. Psalm 31, verse 15. I hope y'all got great dinner cooked at home because there's nothing open today. <laughs> the psalmist said, my times, listen to this, my times are in your hand. My times 
are in your hand. My times, my future is in your hands. Now, it doesn't mean it, it abdicates me from responsibility. No, I've got to walk it. I've got to fulfill the destiny of my life. I've got to walk out the prophetic words. I've got to do all that. But nonetheless, I know God has a plan for me. And I know it's good. And I know He's working in every angle and every opportunity to bring me to the future that He has for my life. Amen. You know, I don't know, how, I don't know how people do it without the Lord. Of course, I've been serving him for a long time, but I don't know how you do it without the Lord, how, you're, how, you, how you wake up and have excitement and hope for tomorrow. I wake up and knowing there's a, there's a higher power in my life every day that's working for my good. I know there's a higher power. God has come down in my life, and he's shifting, and he's changing, and he's moving, and he's orchestrating, and he's doing all of this for my good. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hand and say, God, thank you. You haven't forgotten me. Come on, lift the other hand and say, Lord, thank you that my future is secure in you. So I want you to remember, remember some things about Christmas here today. First of all, I want you to remember that Christmas isn't about gifts. It's about a gift. The Bible says, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I want you to know that Christmas isn't about stress. It's about peace. Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill toward men. I want you to know that Christmas isn't a season. It's a permanent reality for the person who has Jesus in their heart. It shouldn't just be one time a year when we show our family love. It should be 365 days a year. It shouldn't just be one time a year when we get together. We should get together on a regular basis with our family and our loved ones. It shouldn't be just one time a year when we feel good. We should feel good 365 days of the year. It shouldn't be just one time a year when we come to church. It should be the regular habit of your life to come to church and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus came to change us, not just for a few weeks or one month. He came to change our lives forever. Hallelujah. He came to change your destiny. He came to change your future. He came to bring hope into your life. He came to cast out darkness from you. He came to pronounce judgment on the sin and the destruction Satan caused. He came to bind you back and heal you back together and pour in the healing salve and he came to save and he came to deliver and he came to baptize in the Holy Ghost and he came to fill you with miracle signs and wonders and he came to pour out joy and pour out happiness and hallelujah I feel like shouting on this Christmas morning come on can somebody give him a wave in here and give him a hand clap of praise hallelujah he's come to do good he's come to take the blues away he came to inject your life with joy he came to change your family he came to repair everything that's broken oh come on somebody stand to your feet and just give the Lord the best praise on this Christmas morning Come on, I dare you to take about 60 seconds here and just give him some crazy praise. Remember all that he's done for you and just give him some crazy praise. Praise like you don't care who's standing around you, praise. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Come on, Lord, we bless you. Lord, I thank you that I've always been on your mind, God. I heard a, y'all st stand with me. I heard a preacher say this years ago, and I thought it was so cool. He said it's like, it's like God was looking through like, I don't know, Star Trek time or something. But it's like when he went to the cross, you know, Ronnie Henson wrote a song about this years ago. But when he went to the cross, it was like somehow he was looking into the future. Somehow he was looking into the future because if you read Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17, he's praying for the now and he's praying for the future. He's praying for his disciples and he's praying for all future disciples who would come. And so when he went to the cross, it was God speaking to the rest of eternity. I've not forgotten you. Speaking to the rest of eternity, I've told you. 
I had a plan that I will fulfill. Speaking to all of you, every lonely night you've had, I've been there with you. Every bad day you've had, I've been walking right by your side. Every person who injured you, don't you know I was behind you pouring in the oil of healing. Everything, every confusing situation you had, I was there bringing clarity in the end. He's never left us. He said in the, in the, in the, the book of Ezekiel that Ezekiel saw the temple of the Lord. And he said at the end, and this is the greatest part of it, he's describing all the pieces and parts. But in the end he said, and Jehovah Shammah was there, meaning God was always there. He never, and then Jesus told his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel as a, a, to all nations, and you know, yada, 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 and lo, I am with you always. There's never a day you're going to wake up and he isn't with you. There's never a moment you're going to live where he isn't on, or you aren't on his mind hallelujah even when we've tried to run you've always been in his view come on put your hands together give the lord a pray oh hallelujah come on every hand raised lord we bless you this christmas morning and we thank you we thank you that you remember god that you remember us lord and we bless you in return we bless you and we remember you and we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We celebrate the incarnation this morning. We celebrate Emmanuel, God coming to us, God with us. Lord, I thank you for each individual in this church this morning, each family, each person that, that, that made the... Praise God. Thank you for listening today. And thank you for opening up your heart to hear the word of God. Listen, I want to pray for you quickly before we go off the air here. If you have any needs in your life, or if you've never accepted Christ into your heart, I really want to see you make it to heaven. I want to see you finish this race well. Amen? God has provided the greatest gift of all history. That is, He gave us His Son that, who would die for us so that we wouldn't have to face eternity without God. So if you've never accepted Christ into your heart, let's start there today. Then I'm going to pray for healing and other needs in your life. So just pray this with me. Father... I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Forgive me of all sin and become the Lord of my life, Lord Jesus. In your name, I pray. Now I'm going to pray for your needs. Father, in the name of Jesus, for those who are struggling in their bodies, struggling in their minds, Lord, I pray that you minister to them right now. I pray that you touch them by the power of your Holy Spirit. We bind every demonic influence in their life that's attacking them and we cast it out and we just declare the glory of God and victory of God in their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Be set free by the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for watching us. Go in victory and give God the praise. Look straight ahead, my face towards the sun, we will